What's going on? Today I'm going to change the fuel pump in my Fleetwood. Uh, it's been giving me trouble. I knew it was going to mess up sooner or later. Uh, got me where I needed to go. So now it's time to change it out. Uh, this will work. It's a 96 Fleetwood. Uh, it'll be the same for, I know, 94 through 96. 93 should be about the same. I think the only difference may be the uh, quick connect on the fuel line. But I'm pretty sure they're the same. Um, Regardless, the removal of the tank will be the same. Uh, really, it's the same for all Cadillacs, rear-wheel drive Cadillacs, uh, down to like 79, 76, somewhere around there. Um, the only difference is below 93, 93 and down, uh, it'll just be two individual straps for the tank instead of one big strap like the big bodies have. Uh, also work on Apollos, Roadmasters, um, that's about all I can think of right now. G bodies are kind of the same, uh, a little bit different, but same principle. So, without further ado, I'm gonna go change this thing out. So we've got the car pretty much on jack stands. I uh, just use hydraulics to lift it up. If you don't have hydraulics, obviously lift it with a jack, set it on jack stands. But I've done this fuel pump numerous times in this car. Uh, I knew it was going out when I went and picked it up from my mom's house. Luckily it ran enough to get on the trailer and get through the yard and get here. What we gotta do is take them bolts out right there. I'm gonna have to look and see what size they are. I think they're half inch. But I will let you know. Undo that right there. Drain whatever fuel's in the tank out of it. That will save you a headache. I mean, it's got to come off anyways. And you could pull the filler neck. But that's just a lot easier. Just pulling that in the vent tube. And then there's two bolts up there at the front of the straps. So I'll crawl under there and get you a better shot. And you can loosen the two front bolts. Put a jack under the tank. Take the pressure off. Take these bolts out. And that whole assembly will come sliding down. I've uh, done it a bunch of times in this car, like I said. So, I'm going to get everything set up and get to it. And there are the fuel lines, pretty much right above the rear end, in front of the gas tank. Uh, you will need a tool for those. You can do it without it, but it is a nightmare. I would suggest just getting the tool. It'll save you a headache in the long run. Uh, it's a little quick connect, and then there's two quick connects and a hose clamp. I think it's a quarter inch for the hose clamp. But we'll take all of them off and it'll let the pump come out pretty easily. All right, for those bolts right there, I'm gonna try and get the best shot I can on this. It's kind of hard, you gotta have the foam just about on the ground. For those bolts there, uh, it's a 15 millimeter. You can get it on the outside of the shield with a ratchet or the socket. Uh, what I usually do, bend the shield out and get to it from this way. It's a lot easier to get a socket on there. Uh, I usually Basically loosen them up till the end of the threads, right in there, hopefully you can see that. I just bring it down where there's still threads in that nut that's on top, just to give you as much play in this as you can, because that'll help you out later on. And safety glasses probably wouldn't be a bad idea either. I'm going to try and keep my head out of the way most I can. Damon must have tightened that one. That one's tight. The other one was loose. I must have tightened the other one. I just got my hand up there at the top of the threads so I can make sure I don't back it out too far. I have a tank following me. There is still a little bit of fuel in there. I haven't drained it yet. Alright, now we got that loosened up. I suppose I'll drain the fuel out of it. That should probably be step number one. 
I got a little help myself. That happens from time to time. And we're about to pull that. That's a 5 16 Like I said, I've been in this car numerous times before. Yours may not be on the bottom like this. Chances are they probably are not. Probably not. Uh, so you may have a heck of a time getting yours. But 5 16 5 16 as well. This is the fuel pump connection. Just unconnect it. I can do it with one hand. Boom. Just unhook that and we're ready to move on. You'll want to loosen those bolts. Those connect your uh, filler neck to this plastic filler panel. And as you all know, it will break. This one's broken. They're very, very delicate. That will break. Doesn't hurt to pull the gas cap too. Less stuff binding up. A little bit of a hole for the filler net to go through. So we're going to go ahead and pull our hose clamp off. Uh, usually you can get a screwdriver and kind of stick in there and kind of break the not really a seal, but it tends to get seized down there after a long time. Usually you want to try and stay down, or not downwind, you want to stay upwind from this. I'm kind of in the middle, the wind's doing all kinds of weird stuff today. So we'll just see how it goes. Got that good and loose. Got a bucket under there to catch it. That should be kind of self-explanatory. See if we can not make a mess here. You want to try and not damage this hose because they're not very easy to find. And it's not just a rubber hose, which I think I'm going to pull it from the fuel tank side. leverage this way and twist the whole filler neck you can get a pair of pliers on there also which I got a pair on standby but I think I got enough flex range to move all this and yeah she's coming I just realized you guys can't see nothing let me set you up a little bit better how about that there we go. Now you can see. Yep, just took that hose clamp off there. And we're twisting it. It's actually come off pretty pretty easily so far. If I remember correctly, you can kind of take it off slowly. So you can actually drain, you know, if you got a full tank of gas, you can actually drain it into a bucket. But you should never use this tip to steal gas out of people's Cadillacs. So chances are they'll get mad at you, beat you up, or shoot you one. It's pretty empty, which I figured she was. I tried running out of gas when I was sitting here. I didn't really intentionally try, but I was trying to burn up what little bit of fuel was in there. I have added some fuel in there. I knew I was going to change the pump. I was trying to get it down to the shop to be able to change it. But I got no complaints. It gave me enough of a starting. It gave me enough starts to get it out of the grass, get it on the trailer, get it off the trailer, get it in the backyard, wash the car, start it back up, let it run in the backyard, drive around the backyard to the front yard where it is now. So, no complaints here. The only thing that is a bummer is I will be pulling the fuel tank back out once I get it down to the shop. I do the bridge and all that. I will like to have it out of the car. Get a piece of lead out of the way. We're ready to get a jack under here and get it under the uh, gas tank right in there. We'll put a little bit of pressure on it. Should take some pressure off of that. 
We'll loosen those up, pull them out. Well, first we're gonna unhook the fuel lines. How about that? Yeah, we'll do that. We'll unhook the fuel lines. Now we got the majority of the gas out of this tank. Uh, anything, you know, anything from that filler neck down. I mean, really, you can pick it up. Uh, you got a counter reactive sloshing, um, but you can pull it down by hand. I've done it before. It's not the funnest thing in the world, but if you don't have a jack, it is possible. But uh, I do have a jack, so I'm gonna put a jack under there. Uh, pull the fuel lines first, disconnect them. I'll try and cram you guys in there and show you how it's done. It's kind of a pain, but with the right tool, it's easy. The parts store sells a tool. Uh, it's a 3 8 fuel line. Uh, I got to double check on that hose clamp. I think that hose clamp's quarter inch, but we'll find out in just a second because we're going to do that next. There's a little plastic cover there. It just pulls right back. Maybe kind of snug. I think. Pulls back towards the fuel tank. I thought it pulled the other way. It is on each of those lines. Hopefully yours is there because if not, it's probably really corroded up and you're going to have fun. Uh, never hurts to spray a little bit of W40 or PB Blaster in that connection there. It'll probably make life a lot easier for you. That one is your fuel pressure. That one is your fuel vent. So we're going to take this one back first. Or disconnect this one first. Hopefully there won't be fuel in it. And we won't get a shower. So here's our fuel line. This is our tool. If you've never used one of these, here you go. It's simple. It just connects right over the fuel hose just like that and then it pushes up in the line basically what it is there's these three little clamps in here that squish down over the fuel line when it goes over the rib and they expand and when they come all the way over they collapse back on it pretty sweet if you have the tool if you don't have the tool nightmare terrible design but I have the tool so it's a wonderful design and I like it so you just push it in there and that'll that whole gap right there will pretty much go away, and that fuel line should come off fairly easy. Uh, you want to, like I said before, you want to make sure you depressurize your fuel line just in case. I mean, chances are if you've been cranking on it and cranking on it, it has no pressure in it anyways. But it is a good bit of pressure. You don't want spraying down your face. So we're going to go ahead and get these taken off, and then we'll tackle that one too. And after that, we'll be ready to pull the fuel tank out. We got our fuel lines off. Had a moment of ignorance earlier. This is your fuel pressure. This is your fuel return. Get where you can see it. This is your fuel pressure. This is your fuel return. So both of them will probably have fuel in it. This one's your vent. I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier. But that's what it is. But there's what your fuel hoses look like. That was a little rib I was telling you about. A quick disconnect or a quick connect jumps over. So I can pull this down without dumping it all over. There we go. Actually, there's four of them in there. I thought there's three. I guess some vehicles are different. But there's a little teeth I was telling you about. A clamp over it. So yeah, that's how that's done. On to the next project. I was just sitting here thinking, I got this little cap that come on a bunch of tubing that I got. It fits that pretty good. I'm going to put a hose clamp around that. Probably keep from making a mess. And also, I was down the shop getting that. Thought of another, another alternative. Need a little sandwich bag. Put the uh, hose clamp over that. Once again, probably save you from making a mess. So I don't know about you, but I don't really like the smell of fuel. And I don't want it right by the door to my house. So we're going to try and keep the mess to a minimum. That well, looks like it should work pretty good. So we'll get our jack under here and Start pulling the rest of the fuel tank straps. I'm going to go ahead and pull these. I don't have a jack under it yet, but as long as you don't pull the bolts out, you're perfectly fine. You can take the nut off. They are 13 millimeter, which I'm substituting a half inch on one side. That's how I roll. that I got a little adapter thing here built kind of helped to steady it I guess if you will I see a little piece of pipe well it on the bottom of that fits down the jack kind of helps it from toppling over you know, I can only go so far kind of works out all right 
So we'll center that up best we can, jack it up, take some tension off the straps, and then I'll remember that this way actually doesn't work, and then I'll have to go back and show you the other way of doing it. But I'm pretty sure this works. It's been a few years since I've done this, but I'm almost positive this is how I've done it. I've done it quite a few of them. second. You can't jack it up too high and put your bolts in a bind also. So keep that in mind. You gotta find the, the happy spot. And try not to crush your tank at the same time. So that's what we got now. You can literally move that around to get the line up. There's the other side. It kind of sprung out. Once we get ready to put it back in, we'll just push it back up. Slide the bolt in. I mean, it's a little bit of a headache, but I think it's a little bit easier than taking all that stuff out of the way. So we'll let our fuel tank down now and you should be able to slide it out. And that cap didn't work as well as I wanted to. But there you have it. Short, sweet, and simple. Now you'll want to blow all that junk away before cracking this thing open. That's the last thing you want in your fuel tank. Especially when you're putting a brand new fuel pump in there. I'm not down at the shop. I'm up by the house. So I don't have air. So I'm going to improvise. And adapt and overcome. That's what we'll be throwing in there. There's the part number. Got it from AutoZone. I had to order it online. I called them. I seen the part number online, and I called them, and they couldn't order it. So I had to go online and order it. Uh, it was right around 100 bucks. Shipped to the door. Lifetime warranty. Once again, 10 millimeter bolts. Pull them right out. We hear you, Clyde. We hear you. Here's where the fun begins. Remembering how this thing comes out of here. There we go. There she is. Now let's compare it to the new one. Well, at first, I was looking at them before I got them side by side. And I was pretty happy with the outcome, looking pretty good. But then I noticed a fatal flaw. Hopefully, this one just got bent somehow at some point in some time, because I'm sure I'm not the only person that's changed the fuel pump out. But, let's stick that in the tank and find out. If not, if it's supposed to be bent, I guess I'm going to try and bend it without kinking it. See if I can find my tubing bender. Hopefully it'll fit in there and be good. Uh, you don't have to change the whole sending unit. Mine didn't work. Uh, I don't remember what it registered. I think it always said three quarters of a tank, which that could be why. Uh, well, no, that would make it that would make it lower faster. So I don't know. I know that doesn't work. I know the pump doesn't work. So we're gonna slam this one in there. Hopefully, hopefully everything will go smoothly. So it seems to fit pretty good. It springs down, pushes against the bottom, which is good. So obviously the other one was just bent. Wouldn't doubt it. Like I said, it's been in and out quite a few times. I'm sure there's been a few times that it wasn't me putting it in there. So 
I got bent in the process, but we got a new one. Uh, so far, everything looks good. I seem to have these clips on here, which are a little bit concerning, but I pulled them off and they're the same fittings as the other one, so that should work. I did empty out the tank. I wasn't gonna, but when I pulled the other pump out and I seen the strainer just flaking away, the dirt was from me setting it on the ground, but the strainer, I mean, you can see right there, it's just coming off. So I figured I might as well clean it out. And I dumped it in a five gallon bucket, which I made a mess. But if you've seen my video about the stuff that you don't want the cops knowing that you have, you'll know what that is. It works on gas too. Not sure about the smell yet. I mean, my nose hairs are kind of burnt. All I can smell is gas, but we'll find out in a day or so. So we're gonna get to throwing that back in, put the lock ring on it, tighten it all down, and do a crisscross pattern just like you would if you were tightening up a tire that way it snugs down evenly won't have any leaks I do have a new o-ring that i'm putting in there i guess i should put that in there before i put all that on there but it'd be all right I'll slide it all over it and then we'll throw it back in the car got them all tightened down i probably would suggest doing it with a uh, ratchet instead of impact i used the impact but i have skills and i just did one ugga dugga each on them Except for that one. That one took two Uggadugas. But uh, if you don't know what Uggadugas are, stay away from it. You know, use a use a ratchet. It would suck to snap one off because I'm pretty sure they're not fixable. And if you snap one off, you'll probably smell fuel vapors. So, when in doubt, just use a ratchet. But I'm digging the fit of it. It's working pretty good so far. I'm pull these off. Save them because I may need them in the future. 30 years from now. I can get off without destroying it. Yeah, other than that, like I said, digging, digging the fitment. It's got the wiring harness. I was kind of worried about that. I was worried I'd have to tap my stock harness in, but it's got the plug. I believe the wires are even the same colors. So I'll have to double check that. But I like that. It should fit just like factory. I'm going to leave them on until I get it in the car. The process of installation is just the opposite of removal. It's actually, if anything, probably a little bit easier. Now that uh, the tank's empty. There you have it, we're done. Now we get the jack and throw it under there. That may be a little bit more of a task. But so far it ain't too bad. Can I get this up out of the way if I can. As long as I remember to pull it down before I tighten everything up, that would suck. Now you probably will have to finagle this a little bit. It usually doesn't just fit right in there. cool if it did. Bring out the old Thigh Master here. And what did I do? I forgot to get my wire down. Called it. At least I didn't finish up. Alright, well that out of the way. Now we can put it back together. And I'll probably run out of film before I get this done. But uh, we'll give it a shot. Let's see how it works. So I ran out of film on the other one just like I knew I would. So I'll film this side. Good thing there's two sides. And my bolt's way over here. This will probably be the nightmare side. But we'll see. I got high spirits. How about that? doesn't matter which side to go in with your bolt, just as long as it goes in there. Would you look at that? I wish the other side would have went that easy. Probably wouldn't have ran out of film. If that's what you call it nowadays. Jeez. Getting old. 
And I see some rust. That ain't cool. That was just flake paint. We'll have to go over that. But that's it. And we'll tighten them up. Put our fuel uh, filler neck in there. Connect our fuel lines. Probably a good idea. And then we'll be good to go. Dump some gas in it. Connect that bad boy. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Since I got the camera right there, you guys can see it perfectly. Okay. We'll tighten these up. Like I said, we'll do the rest of it and I'll show you how to hook up the fuel lines in case anybody has any kind of wonders. They just connect right to each other. That's the good thing about them. Other than that, it's all downhill from here. Back under the car. In case you didn't already know that. Alright, this seems backwards from what it was before. I believe that's the fuel sending, but it's hooked up this way, so I'm going to hook it up. And if it doesn't work, I'll just crawl under here and swap it around. And like that part of a deal. Just kick that line. And I guess that one may be the sending. You would think it would, because it's bigger. That's what she said. Put that on there we'll tighten it up with our quarter inch socket and on a side note don't let your car sit for god knows how many years it was yeah we have a lot of cleaning to do make sure you put your hose clamps on before putting your hose back on the tank well you can do it afterwards it's just a lot easier this way Just like that. Before tightening these up, I'm going to go ahead and put the bolts up top. I'm sure there's enough play in there to do it either way. Matter of fact, I'm going to just go ahead and do it this way. I'm already down here. Screw it. That way you guys will know too. I say, oh man, I messed up. You know. If you know by now, I don't mess up. Ever. Except for all the time. Those times don't count. Okay, Douglas. All right, now let's get the top. Like a glove. Don't forget those either. I got my Ugga Dugga machine set from stone to kill. We're about to tighten them up. And come back, tighten that little bad boy. I did forget that. And we'll be done. There we got five gallons of fresh gas. A way to get rid of the crappy gas tank or gas cans just like that. This is all fresh gas. I did save the old gas because it does still burn. The car still ran. I put stable in it for the time that it sat up, so I'm a firm believer in it. Because every time I have had to go get the car, every time I started it, the roach on the tank. Every time I've started it, it's fired right up. So if you gotta store your car, this is not a bad investment. I assure you. So I'm probably gonna use the other stuff in the lawnmowers. Filter it out the coffee filter. Fired up. If it doesn't run, I can easily take the carburetor apart, drain the tank. I'd kind of rather not put this much gas in it, seeing as I'm going to be pulling the tank probably in a day or so. But you'd be surprised how much fuel sits on the bottom of the tank that, that pump does not get. Because it was a, uh, it was pretty low on fuel, but it still had five gallons in it. Prepare for screeching flywheel noise. That's, uh, that's going to be a later video. A much later video. But I'm going to cycle the key on and off a few times. Get the fuel system primed. Hopefully it'll fire up first time. That'd be cool. It would uh, spare you guys the horrific noise of the flywheel. But if not, I'll just edit it out. Check for leaks. Looking good. Tell me that's not a 
good sound, especially after it's been lying dormant for a couple weeks. On to phase two of the plan. benefits to low riding. So now me and my neighbor will listen to my car run for the rest of the day. That's it. We're done. You liked it? Like it? If you haven't already, subscribe. Share it. Tell your friends. We got uh, more videos coming. This beast. So get ready. What's <laughs> Good shot. Got away free. It lives to die another day. <laughs> <laughs>